A wife of noble character who can find. She is worth more than, far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. She's like the merchant ships bringing her food from afar. She gets up while it is still night. She provides food for the family and portions for her female servants. She considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She sets up about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her tasks. She sees that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. In her hand, she holds the distaff and grabs the spindle with her fingers. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. When it snows, she has no fear for her household, for all of them are clothed in scarlet. She makes coverings for her bed. She is clothed in fine linen and purple. Her husband is respected at the city gate where he, he takes his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies the merchants with sashes. She is clothed in strength with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instructions is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of the idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but, her, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Honor her for all that her hands have done and let her works bring her praise at the city gates. Amen. Um, today I'll be talking about just learning to honor our moms. Okay, Today is uh, Parents Day, if you haven't noticed. And so if you not have done so already, uh, bought flowers, made breakfast, wrote cards for your parents, um, please do so. Do something to show your appreciation toward your parents before the end of the day. Uh, not just so much to uh, give them something, but maybe a simple word of saying how much you appreciate them, how much you love them by giving them a hug or, or saying something uh, meaningful to them. Uh, I think they'll be able to really appreciate, right? A lot of uh, the love of the parents, especially uh, that of a mother, is the closest thing that we will be able to find uh, in this life the, to the love of God, right? Uh, I don't know if you ever heard the phrase, um, if, if a person is not so um, somewhat lacking in the, in the appearance department, they say, oh, that person has, this is really mean to say, but th that person only has a face that a mother could love, right? I hope you guys never heard that or say anything like that. But, I mean, in essence, I think that's what it is. Like, moms, they don't love their children based on appearance or what they do, but they simply love for the fact that they are their children, okay? And so on this day, I hope we can really uh, learn to express, not just say, mom, I thank you for being my mom. I, Dad, I thank you for all the things that you do, but learn to really uh, appreciate and show how grateful you are, your gratitude towards your parents as an expression of all that they do for you on your behalf, okay? So um, today's text, uh, we read about this woman. Uh, King Solomon writes about this wise woman who fears the Lord. And I wanna um, point out a couple of characteristics, right? I want you to think, what comes to mind in your mind when you think of mother, right, moms? Okay. Many of us have really different relationships with our moms. Some of you are really close that you're able to interact and, and say everything that's in your heart and you have an understanding and she's like your best friend, um, even for guys too, right? Um, but some of you might go through a day or even a week without even speaking to your parents, right? Without your mom, with your moms, right? For some, today is a day of celebration to really appreciate them and to be thankful and be able to celebrate together. But for some, it's a day of sorrow and just filled with memories, knowing that our parents won't always be there for us uh, in this world, right? Um, there was an interesting thing that, that, that I read about a survey done um, asking second graders about mo moms and mothers. And these were some of the responses by second graders. It said, seven-year-old daughter, Mary wrote a note. It says, dear mama, here's a box of candy. And then in capital letters, she wrote, it is very good. I know because I had half of it. Uh, Dear mother, here are two aspirins. Have a nice day. I love this one. Uh, there's a school teacher who asked uh, the children, second graders, what do your moms do for you? And she responded, moms have magic, right? They make you feel better without medicine. Oh, 
that's, that's so true, right? Isn't it? Like sometimes you are feeling like down or sick or no? No, everyone's like, what are you talking about? Right? Uh, but moms have this type of power and second graders, they, they're so pure and they express how uh, their moms are to them, right? And I hope you guys have a soft spot for your parents, for your moms, for your dads that you really learn to appreciate and to love. Like I mentioned, today's text, um, King Solomon, he writes a lot of wisdom literature in the book of Proverbs. And in this book of wisdom, he describes a woman of noble character. And so from verses 10 to 31, he points out there are 22 different noble characteristics that he lists in this poem, right? And you, as I read this, you might be looking at it saying, this is not a poem. It doesn't make any sense, right? Because it's in English, it doesn't make sense. But in the Hebrew, it's an acrostic, meaning that by alphabet letters, um, a poem is being written in this way, right? And so from this, uh, from this text, I want to point out three major things, what the, what the text is talking about on how we can learn to be thankful, to love, and to honor and appreciate our parents. First thing that mothers do is they work, okay? Moms work. Um, they work so hard to support the family. They work so diligently in the times that we don't even see. Some of you might be saying, well, my mom doesn't work. Every time I come home from school, she's just watching TV or doing something. You know, she's, she doesn't do anything, right? Be just because they don't go out to work physically doesn't mean that they're not doing anything, right? I don't think there's a, there's a mom who does nothing, okay? They're always doing something, right? Taking care of the house, make sure everything is tidy and clean and uh, making sure that everyone in the family is fed, making sure that you guys are cared for, um, you know, you don't have uh, other needs, right? They provide for the family and every, doing everything around the house. And they, um, there was a website, salary.com, kind of estimated about how much moms would make if the work that they put in, the hours they work at home, and if they were to be paid for that, it would be $100,000 over that, right? And so we need to learn to see that moms always are working. And in this text, there are a lot of things that this woman does, okay? Verse 13, she's sewing. 13, 19, 20, she selects wool and she works with her eager hands. She's working with her hands. Verse 14, she's shopping, bringing her food from afar, right? Making sure that the family is fed. She cooks, she provides for the food. Uh, she, she provides food for her family, verse 15. Verse 16, she plants a vineyard and gardens, okay? Um, text also says that mothers, in verse 15, they get up while it's still dark to prepare the food. In verse 18, her lamp does not go out at night. And so moms are always working, even though we don't see it, they're always working for others. Always a sacrifice that is involved for the family, for, for you guys, so that everything can can function correctly, right? This is what my, our moms always do. And so we need to learn to show appreciation. Just not saying simply, mom, I, I thank you for all that you do, even though I don't see it, but I know you're doing something in the house, so I thank you for that. Instead of that, learn to really show appreciation, um, showing how they are loved by us, and we appreciate everything. For me personally, growing up, um, I, I caused a lot, of, a lot of heartache towards my parents, especially my mom. And um, one thing, you know, I mentioned this, and my mom was always like, you know, you, you know, when you grow up, I hope you have a son just like you uh, so that you can experience all the things that I was so blessed to experience. And I'm like, thank you, Mom. Um, but my mom is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, was involved with nursing, uh, but just a little thing about my mom. And um, I forget that, you know, my dad being a pastor, she had to take on the role of a, a, a samonim, which uh, supporting the pastor and doing all lot, a lot of the church work. Um, and that in itself is an occupation. And so many times I cause a lot of heartache, always complaining to her, how come we're eating rice every meal of the week and, you know, I want something else. And about food, about like how, you know, where we live and complain about the smallest things. And I remember one thing about my mom is that she was always on her knees, right? Every morning she would get up and she would pray for me specifically and she would pray for the family. She'd pray for my dad and pray for our family. Right? That's something that I, I, I kind of really appreciate it all the time. And one thing that she, she does even till this day that I really am appreciative of is the fact that she, in the first week of the month, she takes time to just fast throughout the whole week. Um, just learning to pray and being on her knees and really um, showing her love towards me and the family in this way. Right? I never really appreciated what that really meant. Uh, not eating a meal and praying for the family until I experienced it myself, right? Um, during one of the Passions Week back, back in the day in seminary, um, I decided, you know what, I want to really honor God and be able to take this time to fast and pray. 
So my goal was to fast for two days, which I failed miserably. And so I said, okay, let's just at least to do one day. One day of just prayer and just really focused on what Jesus Christ done for me. And, and I'm just going to spend time really in prayer. And so I was doing that. But my, I had a roommate that I lived with who did not know I was fasting and decided that this was the prime time for him to invite friends and have a samgyeopsal party at our house. Right? And so while I was in this misery of being so hungry, I decided, you know what? Um, I'm going to pray and go into a deep prayer on my bed. So I lied down and was taking a little nap. And um, all of a sudden, this aroma of this meat was coming up from the stairs and woke me up. And my roommate knocked on the door and said, hey, we're having a great party. And this loud noise that was going on. And he's like, come down and eat. You're missing out. And I'm like, oh, but I'm, I'm fasting today. And he said, oh, he just felt bad for me. He's like, okay, go, go back to your praying and, and pray hard for me too. And like, we'll keep eating downstairs and have fun. And, and I remember um, a lot of times how, how difficult that is when, when the smell and the food is there, but you can't eat. And I remember a lot of times my mom, during the time that she was fasting throughout the week, still made the time and the effort to cook for me and my dad. And she wasn't eating. And so I saw how difficult it was. And so she did everything to really continuously work in the scenes that, that were not seen and to really take care of the family and, and show love in this way, right? And so moms always work to really make a lot of sacrifices for you and I and for the family. And they're always working, whether with their hands or doing something, okay? Second thing that mothers do in this text is mothers, they speak with wisdom. Right? In verses 26 to 30, they shape, it speaks about a woman who shapes the characteristics of a person, of the son. Uh, they speak with wisdom. They influence. They display a lot of grace, mercy, and, uh, and share wisdom with us. Right? Uh, my mom always taught me to pray. They, she always taught me to read the Bible out loud ever since I was young. She would always be in my face and say, you need to read the Word of God out loud. Right? And I said, oh, I'm, I'm reading the word. Isn't that enough? And she's like, no, you have to read it out loud. Pray out loud and be the one at church to sing the loudest, always, right? Uh, to do everything loud. I'm like, mom, can't you not hear? Um, but there was a time, like, even when I was living by myself in Boston, she would call me up, right? She would be in Korea and say, did you, did you read the Bible out loud? Did you pray um, this much, you know? Making sure that I am of influence of following after Christ rather than what she was doing. So she spoke a lot of wisdom and built, uh, had a lot of Christian values and influence in my life to see that the most important thing in life is, to, is my relationship with God. To the point now that I've grown up and see that that is the most important thing in my life, right? It might be for you guys, some of you guys might feel like my mom doesn't really speak a lot with wisdom and you might not feel it right now, but we have to understand that our parents really love us and want the best for us and they are speaking in wisdom so that we don't make the same mistakes maybe they've made or they've seen we have to you know we forget at times that our parents our moms were also they also went through high school they also went through adolescence too and so they know but a lot of times we're like no mom you don't know what's going on at school you don't know what's going on with me right and so we just um don't listen to them, and we see them as uh, John's sorry, right? John's sorry. Uh, anyway, okay. So Solomon he writes in verse twenty six, he's a woman of God. Uh, she speaks with with wisdom. You guys are so slow. Um, anyway, she speaks with wisdom and faithful instructions on her tongue. Right? The things that we hear as John Sori, um, a lot of times we're like, whatever they, it comes out of our mom's mouth, we just don't want to hear. It's just nagging all the time. But we have to understand. They are speaking with wisdom. They want the best for us. And I experienced this uh, firsthand when I, when I had these friends. Um, you know, growing up in the States, we, you know, at our church, it wasn't fairly big. And there was like a group of 10 of us, 15 of us that really grew up together from our childhood all the way up to high school and in, in the youth group. And I remember um, there were these two sisters, right? There were these two sisters, one above my age and one under. And uh, one day, their mom was cleaning the house and she just collapsed. And she went into a coma. Um, she just had a seizure and she had a coma. And she was in a coma for a long time, for about three months. And she passed away right, at a very young age and very unexpected. I remember going to their wake in the funeral and just sitting in the back, just watching things and still in, in the state of shock um, of everything that happened. I remember the scene so vividly where 
uh, the older sister, you know, when we were younger, we caused a lot of trouble. We didn't listen to our parents, you know. We heard every, we took everything as nagging, right? Well, we'll do it later. Oh, no, I don't want to do that. And whatever our parents were always telling us, we just didn't want to listen. But it came a point, like, when at the funeral, I saw the sisters going to the, the casket, right, just hugging the casket and saying, Mom, I'll do better. Sorry for all the times that I have not listened to you. You know, I'll listen well from now on. But you know what? By then, it was too late. And I saw the value of how I took everything for granted. Maybe the things that my mom says, I already, the moment she opens her mouth, I just shut her out. And maybe you guys do that too. The times that they want to really speak uh, to us so that we can better ourselves, so that we can maybe uh, uh, be able to not go through the things that will harm us, it can be prevented. They were speaking to us, but we just generally want to see everything as nagging and just block everything out. You know, moms are always speaking, wanting the best for us, speaking in wisdom. And we have to learn to see that. And, and I hope um, that, that you guys get to really appreciate their hearts, that they mean good, that sometimes that the way they express things that we might not understand to be the same, but I think as you mature, as you grow, and to be able to see the love that God has for you, you're able to see how much they really care for you and they want to speak wisdom in your life. And lastly, mothers, their hearts just generally love, right? Their hearts just is filled with love. Verse, verse 10 through 12 uh, explains this where the woman Solomon is describing is a trustworthy woman uh, putting our lives in their hands and they have no doubts, okay? Uh, whether you are struggling in pain or needing wisdom or needing counseling or needing anything, we can tell our moms and they will be on our side no matter what. I don't know if you've ever seen um, this YouTube clip. It has like 10 million hits. It was a couple of years ago where um, it's called Battle at Kruger, right? It was this um, like a hippo at like a pond, by a pond. A baby hippo was stranded and all these lions were, about like 10 of them, were attacking this hippo, baby hippo. And the mom comes, this ox, I think, ox, right? And then, and then the mom comes and trying to save the baby ox doing whatever it can. No matter if she was being scratched or bitten, whatever, all these lions attacking, she still was trying to protect the baby and ended up fending off. And later, after five minutes, right, of, of all that uh, struggle, trying to be free from the lions, uh, she was able to take the baby ox and, and leave. And I think, you know, animals do this. Think about how much our, our humanly moms do for us and how much they really love us to protect us in every way. I think it's their nature to really want to make sure that their children won't go through any harm whatsoever. And they will jump into the fire, do anything possible so that we don't have to experience any of that, right? Um, there's a story where, where this mom, um, um, there's this story of a mom who, a son who was ashamed of his mom, right? His mom had this, a lot of disfigurement in her face, right? Half of her face was so disfigured, you can, her, you can barely make out her eyes and her nose and her lips this side of the face, right? He was, he was going, attending school, and at, at school, there was a parent-teacher conference, and um, the teacher said, make sure you invite all your parents to come to visit our schools, and we want to have a time to ta chat with them. And so when he heard this, he went home, and he was contemplating for a long time. What if my parent, my, my teacher, my friends see how my mom is really like, and they might think that she's like a monster and they would just run away. Maybe they won't talk to me. And so he was very hesitant and decided, you know what, mom, you shouldn't go, okay? You shouldn't go, don't come, please don't come, right? Um, he went to parents' conference and he himself went and saw all these other classmates with their parents and having a great time talking to the teacher and things like that. He comes home and the mom uh, starts to tell the real story of why her face was like this, right? He's, she was saying, you know, there was a fire when you were younger, and on the fifth floor of our house, there was a huge fire, and you were in your baby crib, and I ran into the house in the midst of the fire and protected you, and, and uh, to save the child, she received this burn on her face, right? I mean, listening to that, I think that's really the natural, the nature of moms, and the way they act is to really guard and to protect. Why? Because they genuinely love. And I think parents are naturally like this because of how our Heavenly Father is, right? 
our Heavenly Father, His natural reaction is to guard and to protect His children who are us, who He has created. And so when he sees us going down the wrong path, when we are struggling with a lot of things of life, when we feel like everything is so difficult, he looks down upon us and he wants so much so to really, for us to come to him and tell him all the struggles so that he can comfort our hearts, so that he can be the one guiding us, right? By nature, he wants to protect us. And because God's nature is like that, I think parents take on that role in this world to be naturally protective having that type of love towards each and every one of us. And so we look towards God who, who has this heart for us, even to the point where he sees you in sin and he hates that, right? He, he's like, man, I want to have this relationship with them and I hope they understand and see that, the importance of that. So what did he decide to do? He decided to send his only son upon the cross. Say, you know what? This is whom I value the most, but I am willing to give it up because I want to have a relationship with each and every one of my children, my creation. So Jesus died upon the cross for our sins, for us, so that we have access to God and this relationship with God. And so many times we look at God and we always go to God to complain and, and say, God, why are you nagging me? Why are you, why are you giving me this guilt trip of not doing, you know, I didn't do quiet time and why are you giving me this guilt trip? When all and what God really wants to do is for us to really dwell in his presence so that we're not out of his sight, so that we can really worship him and, and have this relationship, this fellowship that is so good once you have re really experienced his love for you, right? And so the question is, the way our moms are towards us, how they're always working on our behalf, how they're always speaking wisdom to us, how they're always loving and protective of us, this is exactly what our Heavenly Father is always doing for us, right? And he has given us and placed these moms in our lives so that we can honor. This is what it means to really honor God, not because they do something for you, but because they, for the simple fact of bringing you into this world, right? You know how, how difficult it is? I'm, I don't know it, but you guys might know it too, but I hear it's so difficult of carrying, imagine carrying a baby in your stomach for nine months and you go through all these sicknesses, right? What do we do in the, in, in the, in the womb of our, our moms? We kick and, and we complain and we do all these crazy things and make our moms all miserable on the outside. But yet she endures it and goes through that painful labor. And not only that, it's not, oh, I'm done, okay, get out of here. But now she has to start nurturing us in the days and the nights that they stay up looking after us so that we are well fed, so that we, don't, we are protected, so that you know, they can speak wisdom to us, so that we don't get hurt in the ways that the world is telling us, and how much they continuously love us to take care of us. And yet, when it comes down to it, we see our moms as simply as, oh, they're moms, they're just supposed to do that, right? I mean, we have this day to really appreciate our parents, not just by words and saying thank you, but let's go out and really be able to show our parents of how thankful we are, how we can really learn to appreciate them. Not only that, but let's learn to appreciate our Heavenly Father as well, that He gave His only one and begotten Son upon the cross. And the way that we need to respond is by us of worshiping God. And so think about it. Look to the person next to you. Look how alive they, they look, right? Especially over here. How they're drooling and, and doing all these things. And you know, is this how we show appreciation towards our parents? Of, of our Heavenly Father who gave everything for you, right? We need to really think about this. And the way we respond to God in our appreciation for what He has done is naturally our worship to the Lord. And so let's spend time thanking God, not just because, you know, what He has done, but who He is and how all the things that He's always doing behind the scenes, right? And the things that we do not see, He's always working on our behalf, protecting us, guiding us, loving us, speaking wisdom to us through his word. And so let's get into the word and find out what kind of wisdom he has in store for us each day and learn to grow in his mercy and his grace and his love. Let's pray. Lord, help us to be more like you in a way where we share this compassion, this heart of love and grace and mercy with the people around us, not because as a duty or it's expected, but because we have first experience your true compassion on us when we're so undeserving of it that we may live each moment to really be able to see people not through the views of the world or through our own own views or visions but lord being able to see people with the way you see them 
how you never left the people alone, but you had compassion on them. You wept with them. You shared your emotion with them, Lord. You spent time with them, Lord. Likewise, help us to do the same, Lord, in the body of Christ for each other, that we may just not look upon people and just have these feelings and say, well, I just feel bad. I feel pity for you. But Lord, that we may be able to put compassion into action and be able to live out what you have lived out really caring and loving the people around us so challenge us throughout the week to be reminded to be able to look upon people in the ways that you view them and be able to love them lord as you have loved lord we thank you for your word and just in prayer